Speaking of the political arena, now let's switch to the federal scene and catch up with our regular Labor guest, uh, the member for Kingsford Smith, Matt Thistlethwaite. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Hi, Chris. Now, you've got, you're a good solid right faction ALP member. No doubt you would be one who, who, uh, who uh, uh, pays due regard to the legacy of Paul Keating, both as Treasurer and Prime Minister. Do you agree with his assessment last night that uh, Labor got it wrong in the election campaign by really uh, having a big tax grab and forgetting about middle Australia, aspirational Australia? Look, I didn't see Paul's interview last night, but I have read the comments today. And uh, obviously Labor accepts that we didn't win the election and we weren't able to convince the Australian public of the merits of our tax package and other policies in the lead up to the election. But uh, that's why we're conducting a review of all of our policies. And that review is open at the moment. We're consulting widely with the Australian public and seeking their feedback. But uh, it does underscore the fact that uh, we still need to tackle some of the big issues facing the Australian economy at the moment. Um, issues such as the fact that 1.8 million Australians are out of work or looking for more work. The economy is facing severe economic headwinds. Consumption's down, investment is down, growth is down, and this government doesn't have a plan to deal with those issues. And Labor's been prosecuting the case for the government to develop a plan to help Australians out of a difficult situation. Yeah, it is a difficult situation. It is a tricky uh, economic environment. And I'll come to a couple of the government's challenges in a moment. But this also gets back to the lack of wisdom in Labor's plan. In this situation, it would have been madness to burden the economy with a whole lot of extra taxes that actually lifted taxation revenue overall. What Paul Keating had to say was fascinating. It's something that I talked about with a lot of people before the election as well, and that is that he doesn't really take issue with what he describes as uh, cutting tax expenditures, that is, raising more money by uh, through uh, uh, franking credits or through the negative gearing changes. His real argument is that then what you do with it, rather than using that money to add to your spending, that should have been used to lower income taxes for aspirational middle Australia. That's real taxation reform, to paraphrase uh, Paul Keating and others. It, it, that, that's a pretty realistic and obvious interpretation of Labor's economic mistake, isn't it? Well, that is exactly what Labor was intending to do, Chris. If you look at Labor's tax package leading up to the election compared to the government, for the average worker on, say, $40,000 a year, that would have been $200 a year better off under Labor's tax package than they would have been under the government. So we were using some of the additional revenue that was raised from the proposals that we took to the election to provide relief for Australians. And that's something that the Reserve Bank Governor has been calling for for some months now, to provide a bit of stimulus so that people have more money in their pockets that they can spend in the local community, try and boost consumption, try and boost wages and get the economy growing again. So that was part of Labor's policy that we took to the election. Yeah, there were some tax uh, cuts uh, at the lower end that you agree with with the government, but you're increasing the top rate of marginal tax, for instance. One thing that Paul Keating hi highlighted, he says at 45 cents in the dollar, that's too low. It should be down around 39 cents in the, in the dollar to encourage people. Do you agree with that? Well, our policy was aimed at ensuring sustainable budgets into the future, and we were... Uh, proposing to keep the temporary budget repair levy until the budget got back into a healthy surplus. And we were talking about 1% of GDP and then reviewing that particular policy. So that's the approach that Labor was trying to take, boosting the economy, providing support for low to middle income Australians, but getting the budget back into a sustainable surplus so that you're really providing a good foundation for economic growth into the future. You really are still defending it, I suppose, although you concede that all this stuff is going to be reviewed. Uh, so, well, yeah, and that's a good point. You've got three years, uh, or almost three years, really, to come up with a new uh, economic agenda to take to the next election. But surely, uh, I suppose, the key point here, someone with your own political background, uh, someone like Chris Bowen, who was the Shadow Treasurer, also a, a right faction member, I mean, you people surely would take uh, great notice and place great store in Paul Keating's critique and suggestions? Yeah, we certainly do. I always listen to the comments and the advice of, of Paul Keating. He was certainly, I believe, Australia's greatest treasurer and laid the foundations for the 27 years of economic growth that Australia 
has enjoyed. But there are some discrepancies within the system, Chris, that do need to be addressed. And a classic example is the fact that someone like Dick Smith, one of the wealthiest Australians, recently got half a million dollars uh, of cash payments from the government for franking credits. He didn't even know he got them, um, complained about uh, getting them. How can you justify payments like that when you've got 129,000 Australians on a waiting list for aged care places because the government can't provide enough funding for those spots? The Hilda data came out last week and it indicates that more and more young Australians are staying at home and living with the family for longer because they can't afford housing. And there's no support from the government for young people to get into the housing market, yet we've got the most uh, outrageous and expensive tax concessions for people that are negatively gearing their sixth and seventh investment property. These are some of the issues that the government needs to deal with if we're going to get the budget back on a sustainable footing, provide a bit of growth and boost the economy into the future. Yeah, well, some of that is arguing cases uh, from the last election campaign, so we'll scoot over those. I want to get back to you where you started. You segued to New Start, which, which is what I wanted to do. You mentioned Dick Smith. He's another one who's come out and said there should be an increase uh, to New Start. Um, and the difficulty here is, even if you believe that uh, New Start needs to be increased, as you said earlier, uh, you want to get the budget back to surplus. It is a precarious uh, economic outlook. Uh, can the budget support... Uh, afford this sort of additional expenditure right at the moment, Matt Thistlethwaite? Uh, Labor believes that the rate of New Start is inadequate and that it should be increased. And if you're talking about providing Why didn't a you say stimulus, that before the election? You just said uh, you'd well, review we did, we it. Said, we said we re we'd review it. Um, the reason being that uh, if you look at government payments like that, they interact with a lot of other government payments. For instance, family tax benefits, uh, rent assistance... And the proper thing to do is to have an independent body or an independent person conduct an inquiry about adequacy, consult Australians and the interaction with those other government payments. And that was what Labor was proposing to do. We can't even get the government to agree to that. Uh, we'd like to see the government just to agree to at least a review at this stage to talk about the adequacy of New Start, so that hopefully you can lift a few people out of poverty. The, the Hilda data also uh, last week uh, released indicated that there are more Australians living in poverty now than there were three years ago. And one of the factors, I believe, behind that is the rate of new start. So we've got to look at these sort of things. We can't even get the government to agree to a review. Well, you've got some leading members of the government uh, agreeing to an increase, pushing for an increase. So uh, there, is a bit of, uh, uh, there is a bit of movement on the government side. There's certainly a bit of division. Tell me one aspect of this that's interesting is the number of new start recipients who are getting towards the end of their working life, people over 60 who are caught in that difficult area where they're too young to retire or qualify for the pension, uh, but they feel they're too old and, and the evidence suggests they might be too old to, to, to get a job. It's much more difficult to get a job at that sort of age. Do you believe there's perhaps some need for a special reform, special payment, a pe special sort of adjustment payment at that age? Um... Chris, there's nothing more disheartening than sitting down in your electorate office uh, with someone that's in their late 50s that's been made redundant, uh, can't retire yet because they can't afford to yeah. and wants to work. Um, and they can't get back into the workforce, unfortunately, uh, because of their age. People just won't um, employ them. And the majority of people that are on New Start are in that category. They're over 55 years of age and they're trying to get back into the workforce. And they're the people that we need to be thinking about when we're talking about raising the level of New Start because the Prime Minister's fond of saying, um, you know, if you have a go then uh, you'll get a go, then these people can't have a go because they, they can't afford to. They can't afford the bus trip to get to an interview. They can't afford to buy new clothes um, to smarten up for an interview. These are the factors that we need to take into consideration when we're talking about raising new start for people that are over 55. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a real issue and uh, no doubt we'll get more attention focused on that. Thanks so much for joining us, Matt. Appreciate it. Cheers, Chris.